my friends. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom. The color cast is on the air now from the Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS, here in Southern California. Tis Wednesday night, the 8th of April, 1998. Our old friend Faith Ford is here tonight from Murphy Brown, which is winding up 10 great years on CBS this year. And Larry Gelbart, one of the great minds to write for television and the Broadway stage and motion pictures and stories about Hollywood and moving pictures. You know, there was a chant all through the office today, the staff going up and down, very, very excited because today was $100 million lottery day in California. And all day long we heard the chant up and down the desks and through the hallways, buy the winning ticket and tell the boss to stick it. Okay? It was all day long. Well, nobody's getting stuck tonight. <laughs> they're, all, they're all here at work tonight, uh, humble and contrite and ready to get the show on the air. However, one ticket did produce four of the six winning numbers, and that's a couple of hundred bucks, as Bruce McKay said to me. I said, yeah, but a couple of hundred bucks is hardly stick it money, is it? Eh? A number of you emailed today wondering if I had noted the passing of Wendy O. Williams, who took her own life uh, in suburban New York night before last at the tender age of 48, and yes, I remember her very, very well. Wendy O. Williams had a rock band back in the 70s and the 80s called the uh, uh, Plasmatics. She was dubbed the queen of shock rock. She was a Grammy nominee in 1985. And if you remember her on, uh, on video and uh, on, on uh, shows that she, uh, uh, in which she appeared, she would delight in taking a chainsaw to a guitar or sledgehammering television sets, her way of making a statement. So one night in the late 1970s, the producers of the old Tomorrow Show came to me and they said, you know, Wendy wants to come on the show and she's got a dynamite idea. I said, what's that? They said, she wants to blow up a Pinto. I said, really? They said, no, no, this will get a big bleeping number. You see, in TV, the most important thing you can do is get a big bleeping number. And back in those days, there were very few big bleepers at NBC. So I said, you know, fine, bring, bring her in. So we all assembled one calm evening in Studio 3A back at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, and Wendy O. Williams and the Plasmatics were there. And I forget the name of the song that they did, but it really isn't very important. And there in the background was a forlorn Pinto. Remember the Pinto? It had the gas tank that blew up. So she, she, she came in dressed from the waist up in, in um, Barbasol shaving cream because it didn't melt under the television lights. I kid you not. And she began to sing this song, and at the end, the Pinto blew up in flames and smoke. They sent a, uh, a marshal down from the John Chancellor News down the hall to see if they should call the New York City Police Department bomb squad. And as I watched the debris settling over the set, and Wendy O. Williams taking a bow to a, a screaming throng, throng of young people who had no idea what they had heard, I said to myself, this show is about to come to an end. And about a year later, it came to an end. But do I remember Wendy O. Williams? And I'm sorry about what happened to her, and I hope she's with the angels, but man, what a night she played in my young life in TV in New York City. And by the way, it didn't get a big bleeping number. <laughs> Just kind of laid there and died. Before Faith Ford comes out, a very short story that, I, that just came across my uh, uh, email this afternoon. This is very, very short. A chicken and an egg are lying next to each other in bed. The chicken is smoking a cigarette with a very angry look. The egg says, well, I guess that answers that long-ass question. <laughs> Back with Faith Ford. I'm Tom, you're watching CBS, and thanks for watching our pictures as we fly them through the air. <laughs> It seems like only yesterday that Ford, uh, Faith Ford introduced us to Corky Sherwood on the enormously popular television program, Murphy Brown. And come this year, it's 10 years, and the Emmy Award-winning show is coming to a close, and I'm pleased to welcome Faith, who's become one of the stars of this show, to our program here at CBS. I remember interviewing you on radio in the Valley 10 years ago when the show was first coming on, and you were scared and hoping it was going to work because you needed the employment, huh? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really didn't know. I mean, none of us knew really what was going to happen. We never would have thought, you know, it would have been 10 years. What is it like on the last day? Is, has the final day occurred? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's been about three weeks now since we wrapped. What was that day for you and for the other members of the cast? Well, of course, it was very emotional. Sure. Um, but we were, we were professional about it. Um, actually, we got our final scene for the final show the night before, so we're really nervous about getting that scene done and being able to do it. And we knew we didn't want to 
have to worry about lines or anything. So we kept drilling it and drilling it and drilling it. And we actually rehearsed just before dinner, which was very rare for us. We actually went in by ourselves with a director and everything. We just kept running it and uh, the cast. But it was really neat. It was kind of spooky. Yeah. You know, because we're on the set together. And, and, and you know, this is it. Huh? Yeah. Even though the rumors had been for some couple of years now that it's coming to a close, when it finally gets there, it's tough. It is. It, it can be really tough. But, I mean, we kind of knew for two years, though. We, we thought it was going to end right. the year before, and then we weren't sure, and then we were waiting to find out if Candace wanted to do it, because we, we were really contracted for two years, and Candace wasn't, and it was really whether or not she wanted to do it again, and she decided she wanted to come back because she had some things she didn't, she hadn't said that she wanted right. to say before she left. And uh, I guess Diane English came up with this idea to do this breast cancer mm -hmm. thing, and that was a good enough reason for Candace to want to come back, you know. And Corky, how, how did Corky change through the years, and how did Faith change through the years? Well, Corky, there are some Cor parallels. Corky and Faith had some parallels. Yes, yeah. That, that, yeah, a absolutely. I was married um, a year after we started the show, and and uh, so was Corky, <laughs> and then Corky got divorced, and then I got divorced, and you know, but in, it didn't happen on purpose. No, it I really understand. didn't. I understand. It just sometimes things like that happen. But uh, Corky is actually was working on her second divorce, so in many ways her her life was much more tragic. You know, uh, me myself and I, I like to think that um, I don't, I operate differently than Corky. Corky's kind of goes on a surface level a little bit more. Kind of wears it on her sleeve a little bit more than you. Much might. more. Her feelings are like right here, you know, all the time, and uh, she's very out there with everything that goes on in her life. And uh, I'm not like that. I sort of, you know, I'm kind of a steel magnolia in that way. I mean, I can be going through whatever, and on a professional level, you would never even know. You know, that's just the way I prefer it. Let me ask you about some, uh, a personal thing that happened with Candace Bergen. She lost her husband, Louis Moll, the film director. Mm -hmm. And having visited your set once as a tiny guest on your show, it mm -hmm. really struck me how the cast and crew of that show merged and melded and became almost a family. You could mm -hmm. sense that feeling, that mm -hmm. presence in that studio at Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. When Miss Bergen was going through that personal tragedy in her life, did she bring any of it to the set? Well, I mean... Candace is not a person that really likes to do that a lot. I right. mean, she came to the set to sort of get away from all of that, I think, really. And when we talk about it now, she said, I really thank you guys for being in my life because you kept me laughing at times when it was very hard for me. Right. And that made, us, that made me feel really good because a lot of times we felt like we wanted to do more or say more or whatever. But I think it was just a really, it was a refreshing escape for her coming to work and driving through those gates and she knew that when and, she and what about for the rest of you I mean you knew she was going through this, yeah. this horrible yes. horrible thing and so you want to be closer yeah, huh? exactly yeah. and occasionally we'd say are you okay is everything okay yeah. and she'd she'd say yeah yeah you know and the most Candace would ever do is like you would see her you would be reading a scene or something and a tear would just sort of trickle down her face and and then she just and she'd keep going and and that's just sort of what she's like you know she's an incredible lady that way I'm sure you've been asked this since the uh, final taping. Uh, your life will go on. You mm -hmm. will find work elsewhere. Have you begun to do that yet, or do you take a little time off uh, to, to rest and relax? Uh, well, I had had a plan to take time off. Actually, I always plan to take these great right. vacations, and it never seems to work out that way, but I guess it's good. You know, they say it's an old actor's uh, thing. You, you know, plan a vacation, and then you're right. destined to get work. Something comes along. Well, I sort of the Monday after we wrapped, actually, I, I had a meeting with some people about a pilot, and um, I'm going to be working again. Really? So I'm going to be doing another so you don't pilot. So you don't have the feeling that some actors have when a project such as this comes to a close, oh, my God, I'll never work again. I, no, I didn't really feel that way. I thought, well, you know what, I, I hope to work again. Um, and we were kind of talking about some other stuff. But I really don't like to think of that in any way, mm -hmm. anyway, and I've never done that. For the most part, but we do joke about it on the sh show. Of course, Joe and uh, Charlie, myself and Grant, we used to always talk about how you know we're going to be popping out of suitcases if we're lucky, you know, <laughs> and all these kind of things. But it's all in in good fun. You mentioned that you were divorced, and I I won't go into that except to ask: Is it quiet around the house now? Oh, it's very quiet, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. My life is very peaceful. I really like it a lot. I mean. It's about, you know, it's about doing what I want to do now and just sort of thinking, you know, I used to be able to not really 
when someone would ask me, what do you want to do? What do you like? What, what do you want to do? I couldn't really comfortably ask, uh, answer that question. Mm -hmm. And now I kind of know, you know, I want to have serenity, peace, and, and happiness, and enjoy my dogs, which I hear you have a dog. Yes, I do. Yes, yes. I do. Uh, tell me about your dogs. My dogs are like, they're my children, of course. I gave birth to them. Yeah, you know? <laughs> they're, they're really just furry little children, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I always say, you know, it's, it's very interesting because I don't have any children. So, of course, they're going to be like, I mean, I cook for them now. Really? I make them like steamed vegetables and brown rice and chicken. It depends. And sometimes I give them fish. And, you know, I totally love that. And, you know, they love like baby food, you know, and I give them little baby really? food treats. Oh, I, they're just... I love you it. You know, I'd walk on all fours for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get in trouble. And, and, and what are their names? Um, Tess is the girl, and Bosco is the boy. Is my and, boy. like, do you take them out to the doggy park and socialize them with other dogs? I stuff? have. I've had bad experiences in the past, though, because, you know, one of my dogs, Bosco, tends to think he's really a tough guy. And recently, you know, I took him out, you know, on a walk, and he's sort of this huge dog, I don't know what it was, part mastiff or something, just, just before I knew it, it's, my Bosco's head was in his mouth, you know, and it tore, tore his ear and everything. He was oh. just like looking at me like, oh, mommy, mommy, what is this dog doing? He was just screaming. It was the, oh, and I was, it was just okay? like he was I mean, my he's, child. He's oh, yeah, he's oh, fine. Okay, okay. Just had to have some stitches and he was fine. But, I mean, I thought, I didn't know what happened. I was tourniqueting in his neck and I, you know, poor owner of the other dog. I was like, give me your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, tourniqueted his head. I don't know where it kicked in, but all my motherly instincts just kicked right in, you know. And uh, he was fine. Brown rice and chicken. Brown rice, chicken, Fish vegetables. now and again. What kind of dog do you have? I have an English sheepdog, an old English sheepdog. Oh. He's eight months old. He weighs 90 pounds. He's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and and he, what's his... What's, what's, his name is Oliver. Oliver. And when I go home and I put him to bed, I say, well, Ollie, this is certainly a fine mess. You've gotten us into this. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> and he looks at me like I'm stupid, which I am. Let me take a fast break. We're chatting here with Faith Ford of Murphy Brown which comes to a triumphant close on CBS this May. The toll-free is up and running, and we'll continue after this break. Uh, with Faith Ford, here's Patricia on the toll-free in Lewiston, Maine. Hi, Patricia. You're on the air here at CBS. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Hi. Faye. Um, I'm calling to ask um, Faye, what are the problems in dating, and do you think you'll ever get married again? Um, I don't really think about dating that much, no. Um, I don't really have problems with it, no. Um, and yes, I probably will get married again. But I mean, you, you would go out to dinner with a guy or a gal, I mean, mm -hmm. socially, you're not a hermit, you're not, not a recluse. A real, no, I'm not. And I'm, but I don't look for dates either. I've never been one of those. Well, I wouldn't know how you do that. Where would you go to look for a date in this town? Um, I've never done it, so I wouldn't even yeah. know. Yeah. But I actually have a, 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 a special someone in my life. A friend. Right That's, now. Good. Yeah. That's good. That's mm good. -hmm. That's good. And Patricia, are you of dating age? Well, I guess everybody is these days, huh? Well, I'm 36. I have three children, and I'm single. <laughs> are you really? Yes. And, like, do you have a relationship with anybody, or do you go out with guys, or do you want to? And if you don't want to answer it, by the way, I don't mean to pry. Oh, I have no problem. Um, once in a while, I will. And um, my philosophy is when a man realizes a woman is superior, this world will be such a better place to live. Oh. Well, what did you say? I, I'm <laughs> well, um... I don't know about women and men, uh, anyone being superior over another. Um, but what, what, what did you say, Patricia, about women? I, I missed your comment. Right. You know how women are always taking care of men constantly. But men are... <laughs> Not in my world, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> it's the you, truth, you got the wrong you know? guy, Patricia. Pardon me? I say you got the wrong guy. There's not a lot of taking care of in my life. There's, there's some comfortability, but it's well, not like I'm being I mean. spooned. I, I don't get brown rice and chicken and baby food every day at my house, I can tell you. Well, you know... Men are, they always seem to feel like they're, you know, where's my socks? Where's my tie? Do you know this? Where's this? I where's understand. That? I understand. You know what I mean? In yep. the traditional sense, yeah, that can happen a lot. And a so lot. you're tired of doing that. You want someone who will sort of meet you halfway. And maybe I want somebody that is on my level. I, I think you, you deserve know, it's that. It's so very, very hard out there just to find anybody to be relaxed, especially at 36 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, don't give up. 
because they're out there and don't give up. Just keep taking care of yourself. That's the advice I would give you. Oh, I, I plan on it. <laughs> I totally plan on it. I'm an independent woman and I'm very strong-minded and very self-sufficient. I'm very happy. You sound very independent and that's a good quality. Keep it. I'm glad you called, Patricia. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Okay. I want to say one more thing. Corky, sure. I think you're a beautiful, beautiful woman. Thank you. And any man would be happy to have you. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's okay. sweet. Thanks. Well, you have a nice Easter. Okay, you too. You too. Both of you. Thank Thanks. you, Patricia. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Uh, your mom taught school. Right. Right. And did she pass on, uh, in Pineville, Louisiana, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Did she pass on values to you? What, what did your mom teach you, when you as you were growing up? Oh, you know, all sorts of things. Like, um, one of the things my mother, you know, I was talking earlier, I was talking about my mother, she said, you know, once you've sort of been teaching school for over 15 years, mm -hmm. it's, you start to accumulate what you, you would call tenure. tenure. That's right. That's and right. now I said, I, I made an observation recently, I said, wow, I've been acting for over 15 years now. Maybe I'm starting to accumulate ten, tenure, mm -hmm. you know? And what I call that is a, being able to have a voice and um, being able to really speak what you feel without offending To say offending to a director, people. listen, yeah. I don't want to play the part this way because I think this part should go as follows. Yeah, yeah but without being difficult sure, about it or, you know, getting a bad rep, it's just sort of like saying, what if we try it this way? Mm -hmm. Or I think let, I would, it would be nice to be able to try it this way. And then if we don't like it this way, then maybe we can do it your way or something. There's a way to be diplomatic mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like to this point, at this point in my life, it's, it, it's good to be able to do that, you know, and that's what I call having tenure to a certain extent. And in your family, were your siblings younger or older than you or both? I have one older sister. A big sister. My big sister. Yeah. And she's in Nashville. She's a songwriter. And um, Devin O'Day, she has her call name on the air. She works at, she does at WSIX in Nashville. And, uh, That's a big station, WSIX. Yeah. When I was it's a, a DJ, one. a top 40 DJ, that was a huge radio station. It is. Huge. It still is. Yeah. It still is. I think they're still number one there. Mm -hmm. The morning show is still number one. And Devin uh, O'Day. Devin O'Day. Oh. She was an amazing sister, actually. Um, she was Miss Louisiana National Teenager, oh. and she, you know she was most like, likely to succeed in high school and everything. And and you know, probably overshadowed her younger sister a little bit. Well, I. In, I was comfortable with that actually <laughs> because she sort of really took care of me and it was if you ever heard of living in your sister's shadow I was comfortable doing that uh, through high school because I learned a lot from her and stuff and she actually cut all my dramatic pieces and everything she got me into acting for goodness sakes yeah. so I, I, I was comfortable with that you know in many ways. And like did you did you do sister stuff together like jump rope and stuff like that you know? Well we actually we used to sing together. We did in high school and and then earlier I guess we first started singing my grandpa got us started he bought a tape recorder when we were like three or four and I was gonna bring tapes but I forgot them of us singing but we used to stand, uh, stand on the hassock in my grand, grandpa's house and he put the tape recorder on and we'd take a jump rope and we'd sing like... Oh, the microphone know, was the yeah. jump rope handle, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. was our microphone, and we'd sing things like, you know, deep, uh, one of our favorite songs was Deep and Wide, you know. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. <laughs> well, I don't know. I listened to it not too long ago, and of course I was a puddle, and so was my sister. We were crying, you know, about it, because it was just sort of weird to hear us singing as little girls, and we started mm -hmm. harmonizing really young and stuff. But we were out there even then, so it's not a surprise as why I was, I'm doing what I'm doing now. Devin O'Day. Mm -hmm. That's very good. You know, there was a woman who used to work here in town, uh, Kelly Lang, who's on the news on Channel 4 here in town. You've seen right. Kelly on yeah. ABC News here. And she used to be the traffic and weather reporter uh, for a local radio station. And in the morning, she was Dawn O'Day. And in the afternoon drive time, she was Eve O'Night. No, she I, was not. Yeah, I swear to God. I, I, I couldn't make it up. That's so yeah, great. Isn't that good? Yeah, she Eve wore Eve O'Night and Dawn O'Day. <laughs> Here's Elvis on the toll free in Na <laughs> Nashville, Kentucky. Hello. I am absolutely in hog heaven. Well, <laughs> I really well, am. I, you know, Elvis, I thought you were in Kalamazoo. When did you move in? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Nashville, Tennessee, not I, Kentucky. I, I understand. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I tell you, I'm on the phone with the greatest announcer and late night show host besides David Letterman, I mean, in the world. Thank and you. And the most beautiful actress and woman in the world. Amen. And well, my question is this. God bless you. Why, well, God bless you. Uh, boy, God blessing all of us with you on there, I'm telling you. <laughs> but realistically, uh, what is the most hilarious and embarrassing moment on your wonderful program? The hilarious and embarrassing? Yes, yep. sir. 
Well, yes, ma'am. Mm. On his program or No, mine? no, on, on Murphy on Brown. My program? The, the, the take you wish that they would never show on bloopers if they All ever right. would. Oh. Oh, gosh. That, that, that gets me on. Uh, well, the, the, did you see the episode where Candace and I dressed up like, well, women of the night, ladies of the evening, hookers? <laughs> hookers. Well, that was sort of interesting. And now when I look back on it, it's very embarrassing to me, sort of what I had on and the hair and the wigs and the boobs. and the, I mean, I mean, yeah. I don't know if you saw that episode, but it was very funny. No, but I can picture it in my mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, you make Marilyn Monroe look, um, mm, you know, a little off-colored. Well, my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do with all these compliments tonight. That. I'm very serious about that. Well, thank you. And y'all make a good couple on there. I guarantee you. All the thing he's got to do well, is die. We're, 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 we're thinking about our own morning show to, to, to take on Regis and, and Kathy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's that. so funny. Well, Elvis, I'm sure glad you called, pal. God bless you. And right, God bless you back, and take, take care. care now. Okay. Thank you, Elvis. And I love your number name. number one, Tom. Thank you, sir. Good night now. Good night. Bye-bye. When you left uh, Pineville to go to New York, as I recall, mm -hmm. and then you subsequently came to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. did your mom or your father give you any, any parting words of advice? Like you can always come back if it doesn't work out or oh, work you all the way and stuff absolutely. like that. You know, like mothers that and door fathers was do. always open. Right. You know, you can always come back home, honey. You know, you always have a place to come home to. That's what my daddy used to always say, and my mother too. And she said, you know, you can always come back and go to school, mm -hmm. you know, because I had also wanted to be a fashion designer, merchandiser, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, but once I got to New York, I didn't want to leave. And I What if you would have had to go back, huh? Oh, well... It would have been kind of crazy because uh, I don't know what I would have said to everyone. I would have thought I was a failure, which is interesting. That's what the show that I'm going to be doing is about, actually. Um, a girl who has to go back home after leaving mm -hmm. and marrying well. And she gets divorced and she goes back home. And she wants to, but everybody looks at her the way she left. But she's not the same. Right. You know, right. sort of. And that's the way it is for me. I'm still faithy. When I go back home, it's like, <laughs> hey, Faithy, Faithy, you know? <laughs> Faithy did so well, you know? And I love that. that Are they... you a cheese when you go back to Pineville? Big cheese when you go back there? Uh, to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't like to think I'm the biggest cheese. I mean, there are a lot of very famous people that have come out of Louisiana and that are also in this business. But, I mean, in my hometown, I guess people are very proud of me, which is good, you know? But I never make a big deal out of it. So... You don't seem the type, if you don't mind my saying no. that, that you would make a big deal. Because no. when you look at what you do for a living or any of us, it's not really a great big deal. Well, I'm not curing cancer, and I'm not Mother Teresa. So the way I look at it is I'm not doing very much more. You know, doctors, they're doctors, they're teachers. They're people that are doing things a lot more. But in, in some way, I feel like I can be of service to you people. You see, when I, lived I in New, when I lived in New York, and it's true here to a certain degree, but in New York especially, Garbage collection is extremely important, if you catch my drift. It, it, uh, it's extremely important. You are right. Yeah. You're right. And I often thought that we've got the wrong people driving around in limousines. Like if the president gets a cold, there's a huge headline in the paper that the president has a cold. Right. If my garbage man misses a day, it's a disaster in New York City in July or August, okay? Oh, it's know. just there's a whole sort of, uh, what do you call it? There's a pileup. Or yeah, something. Yeah. Even in Los Angeles, when it rains, have you noticed that they don't pick up the garbage? So if it rains for two or three days, I mean, it's just it's yeah. whatever. But there's it, something there's something very um, not nice about walking down a New York street in <laughs> mid-August uh, and going past a restaurant with about fourteen hundred pounds of leftovers out there in the street. You oh, know, they're just huge yeah, mounds yeah, of trash. It's tough. It's tough. Let me do a fast break and then back with. Uh, Faith Ford, one of the stars of Murphy Brown here on CBS, will continue after this break. With Faith Ford of Murphy Brown, uh, in the early days that you, uh, in the early days after you came to Los Angeles, you had worked in New York, so you had some experience, you had some credits. Mm -hmm. Did it take you a long time to to land in Los Angeles? Uh, you mean work-wise? Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, I've had it pretty, pretty good. I mean, I started working guest star spots and things like that. I guess I came out here in February of 85, and 
I did 30 something. Oh, really? I did a couple of other things. Hardcastle and McCormick. I did, you know, Hardcastle and McCormick was my first guest star spot. Remember that with Brian Keith? Sure. And uh, that was very interesting. But Interesting uh, in what way? Well, I. <laughs> I just didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing really. I was learning as I went, I think. And then I got into a really good acting class after that. I think that sort of I right. saw that and I decided I really needed to get into it. And I got into an acting class and I, I guess um, my first sitcom job was Webster or a spin off of Webster. With Wasn't Matt Webster Davis. the little kid? Yeah. Yeah. But it was a spin off of that with Mac Davis. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. And I can remember I was auditioning a lot at the time for sitcoms, and Meg Lieberman used to call me in a lot. She'd call me in for Facts of Life and everything. And Meg, Lieber name? Meg Lieberman is? A casting director. Oh, okay. Uh, really well-known casting director, you know. And she said, Faith, you know, I just don't know if this is your medium. <laughs> you <know? laughs> she said, I keep bringing you in because I really like you a lot. But, you know, the timing thing, yeah, you know, yeah. there's a timing to sitcoms and stuff. And I just remember, I'm the type of person that in my life, when people have told me they just didn't know if I could do it, or you can't, or maybe you should try something else. Stand back. That made me want to do it more. Sure, sure. <laughs> and it became my, my, I don't know, I just, I had to do it then. And then came along Popcorn Kid, and then Murphy Brown was in, what, 80, 88? Mm -hmm. We did the pilot? Mm-hmm. So that's about how long it took one time, so three years. Well, I've always enjoyed speaking with you on radio and television, and I wish you well. Uh, you're one of the good guys in this town, and uh, you've kept your feet on the ground, and I, I hope whatever your project is, it turns out very, very well. And I Thank sure you. do appreciate your coming over Thank tonight. you so much. And Tom. give my, uh, well, you, uh, are you going to have another party with the Murphy Brown? Or? We're going to see each other in Chicago. We're going to do Okay, well, to all the people I met that day, please thank them for their kindness to me and say hello for me, would you? I will. All right, Absolutely. Faith Ford. Be well. Thank so Thanks much. again. Faith Ford is the guest, one of the stars of Murphy Brown. You know her there is Corky Sherwood. We'll continue with the great Larry Gelbart after this break.